If you're in need of a hospital bed due to illness, rehabilitation from injury, or end-of-life care, the last thing you need is the subtle or not-so-subtle torment of exposure to increased levels of non-native EMF. I've had hundreds of interactions with people and hospital beds during a previous career in emergency medicine. I've moved patients into and out of purpose-built medical beds of all types in private homes, emergency rooms, inpatient care, memory care, assisted living, and rehab. I have a pretty good grasp of the features, advantages, and benefits which are significant. There is nothing that can replace a proper hospital bed. It can be a considerable help with mobility, in particular transfers from a walker or wheelchair to a bed. They can aid in circulation, ease breathing, provide better comfort, and more, but there's a problem. If the bed plugs into the wall for power, there's the possibility the probability of enhanced electric field exposure. And I mean enhanced exposure in a bad way. (laughs) The power travels from the wall receptacle to the bed that the patient's lying on, just inches away, in fact. So this increases electric field intensity surrounding the patient. In this bed that I tested I measured ambient electric field exposure on the bed around 0.9 volts per meter, which equates to the ideal range, ideal exposure levels. But when power was applied, when the bed was simply plugged in, the electric field intensity measured far into the extreme range, which is Of course, the highest level of exposure within the precautionary guidelines. The inverse square law that we just finished discussing teaches us that close is bad with regard to non-native EMF exposure. With this hospital bed, the patient is literally just inches away from the electric wiring. Couldn't be much closer So when the bed is energized, this field then couples efficiently with the human body to create a measurable increase in the alternating current voltage potential versus Earth. This is a condition not found in nature. Now, for generations, patient beds were not powered by electricity and therefore safe from additional electric field exposure. Interestingly, the beds in the emergency rooms don't typically require AC power, at least not in the hospitals I've worked in. The reason for this is the need to quickly move the patient from one department to another without the additional fuss of plugging and unplugging beds. And the manual beds, well, they work fine. They have all the necessary movements, raise the head, Raise the feet, raise the raise and lower the entire bed quickly, easily, reliably, using either mechanical, hydraulic, or uh, pneumatic action. So there's no non-native EMFs. They are not, however, designed for the patient to be able to initiate the various movements himself. That's not such an issue in the ER, but maybe in a home rehab or a hospice situation, depending on the availability of a caregiver to give assistance when needed. So I'm not aware of any alternating current powered hospital beds with appropriate non-native EMF countermeasures. What I'm talking about here is, has anybody anywhere ever made a hospital bed that takes the reduction of non-native EMF exposure into account. I, I'm not aware of any. Maybe they exist and, and I'm not aware of them, but I don't personally know of any. Not that I think it would be difficult to design such a bed, basically shielding the power cable, the mechanisms and control, 
shouldn't add much cost to the production, development, and manufacturing, but perhaps there's not enough awareness, not enough demand. Not enough people are aware of the harmful nature of electric field and dirty electricity exposure. That's right. Yep, I said dirty electricity exposure because dirty electricity, in a sense, lives within, is propagated within electric fields. The lower electric fields exposure, the lower the exposure to any dirty electricity that's present on the electric lines. The higher the electric field, the higher the exposure to existing dirty electricity. So what about solutions? This hospital bed that I recently evaluated had electric field levels of less than one volt per meter. Without the bed plugged in and around 30 volts per meter with the bed plugged in. So that's um, 20 volts per meter above the threshold for the extreme exposure range. Is there any way to reduce the exposure levels? Yes, there is. Aside from if there might be a purpose-built hospital bed out there designed for minimizing EMF exposure, um, I'm going to outline some solutions. So in general, the best strategy is what I would call the periodic removal of the source of electric fields. What does this mean? It means collapsing the electric field when it's not in use. In other words, unless you are actively adjusting the bed, you don't allow any increase in electric field exposure. Nothing above ambient levels. The patient's electric field exposure in this case would revert to an ideal exposure of less than one volt per meter. By the way, if you haven't done a complete evaluation and remediation in your home, you should definitely consider doing it in a patient care situation. In fact, I can't imagine a better time to get control of non-native EMF exposures of all four types. Having done so, the ambient levels for the patient of all four types, magnetic fields, electric fields, dirty electricity, and RF radiation may be lower. We're talking today about just electric fields and dirty electricity because these two are the problem, the obvious issue with hospital beds. So once again, our solutions for electric fields and dirty electricity exposure in hospital beds will focus on collapsing the electric field when it's not in use. In other words, unless you're actively adjusting the bed, you don't allow any increase in electric field exposure. Nothing above ambient levels. So there are a range of solutions with greater or lesser convenience and greater and lesser cost. And it's important to note before we get into these that we're only looking at the convenience, cost, and effectiveness realm in these EMF-based solutions because I, I don't know your particular situation. I don't know the unique safety issues for the patient and the caregivers in your situation. Patient safety is the primary concern. You need to look after that yourself with your specific situation in mind. A local, properly qualified EMF consultant may be of great help. Check out my Finding a Qualified EMF Consultant in Your Area for Help locating one. So here are three solution types. Each of these will work for reducing electric fields and therefore exposure to dirty electricity. My hope is that one of these may be appropriate for your situation. So number one, actually this is a cheat, right? Because there is no electric field. If you can find one and you're willing to put up with a little inconvenience, use a manually operated hospital bed. The problem is 
they're not patient operable. So depending on the frequency of position changes and the number of caregivers, this may be a perfect solution. The caregivers can be summoned with a bell, that's typical, or by voice, neither involve, by the way, additional EMF exposure. And then they can perform the needed bed adjustments. All right, so the next couple are electrical in nature. If a manual bed won't work in your situation, but you do have adequate caregivers, the bed can be plugged into a receptacle controlled by a light switch. Easy. When the caregiver is summoned, he can switch on the power to the bed, and the patient or caregiver can perform the needed bed adjustments. So this too can be an excellent solution as the only time the patient is exposed to electric fields of a higher intensity and therefore greater exposure to whatever dirty electricity is on your electric lines is when the switch is turned on. All right, next option is what's called a remote disconnect. And I'll tell you what, there are some really superior solutions in this area to be explored. Solutions which can be built or installed by an electrician with the inputs of a qualified EMF consultant, whereby just the receptacle into which the bed is plugged will be energized or de-energized with a remote control. Using the same hardware, it's even possible to de-energize one or more branch circuits to lower ambient electric field exposures. You'll likely want help selecting the components and mapping the correct branch circuits with this one, but it, it may provide the highest level of convenience together with superior electric field and therefore dirty electricity exposure reductions. If the patient is capable, he pushes a remote like a car door remote, to energize the bed, then uses the bed controls to adjust the bed as needed. A second push on the remote de-energizes the electric power to the bed and or selected branch circuits. No caregiver involvement is necessary. So in summary, home use of a hospital bed can be an enormous benefit in critical situations, but are they safe? No, not generally, not without proper remediation, not safe from electromagnetic exposure, not if they're powered by alternating current electric power. Otherwise, these beds can expose patients 24 hours a day, seven days a week to extreme level electric fields if there aren't any appropriate countermeasures. So do increased electric fields intensity cause a problem with dirty electricity? Yep, absolutely. We can think of dirty electricity as living within or inhabiting electric fields. So greater intensity of electric field provides greater intensity of exposure to whatever dirty electricity is within the power lines in your home. We reviewed three types of solutions. I hope one of these will be right for your patient. And you know what? It's wonderful that you're concerned about minimizing exposure and your loved one's exposures to harmful man-made electromagnetic radiation. That awareness itself is a gift not everyone receives, not everyone is able to understand. If you've been given an awareness, I encourage you to take action. There are so many possibilities for living a life with lower EMF exposure levels. Thanks for your time and attention. This is Keith Cutter with EMFRemedy.com. God willing, we'll see you next time.